Hey guys, today we are going to talk about ChatGPT. ChatGPT released its API yesterday and we want to show you how the native integration between UChat and ChatGPT works. For this video, I prepared two use cases. One will be for single text completion. So you ask something towards ChatGPT and you will get a certain response back. But the second use case is maybe even much and much better. And that allows you to build a conversation with ChatGPT. These things can cover small talks. Uh, the user can ask certain questions, not business related, but more generic data and information that can be given towards chat GPT. I wanted to do a third use case, but we need to do some troubleshooting on that part. And that is to use chat GPT to answer your business information. So we're working out some last minute issues and once done and fully tested, then we will create and record that video for you as well. So the very first thing that you will need to do is connect OpenAI into your UChat workspace. Once you've done so, then you can go directly inside the flow builder and could look something like this. So we have a first use case and that is just single text completions. We ask a question towards the chatbot, I'm going to store that answer, right? So we can store that answer to any specific custom field that we like to. So let's go with question. From here, we're going with an open AI action. And if we take a look, you will see the create chat completion all the way at the top of the actions list. Once done, we're just going with this messages input and we have a messages input of user stating that this input comes from a user gives a little bit more context towards chat gpt so we're going to give the input of user and then for this example we're going with last text input you could also go with the custom field saved inside the question block but last text input will fetch that exact same question anyway then we will have some test examples as you can see here the model I will just leave at default. So the default is a GPT 3.5 Turbo. The maximum tokens is a little bit depending. Usually I'm setting these to 500 to at least get a really good explanation back from chat GPT because it's conversational. It will require a little bit more tokens. But then again, the completions by chat GPT are 10 times less expensive than all the other models so far. So. Increasing your max amount of tokens will not affect the price increase on your OpenAI account by that much. Then you can experiment with all the other features like temperature, presence, a penalty, frequency penalty, stop sequences, number of completions, best, best completions. I will leave them all at default and let's test the request. So in the initial data, I just input a really simple test value. Can you help me come up with a slogan for my pizzeria named Alfredo's Pizzeria? So let's see what we get. So you will see that we get a response back and you will see the model used, the prompt tokens, also the completion tokens and the total tokens. You can all map that if you like to. It's not really uh, useful for the text generation and the reply itself. You will see on the messages, the conversation thus far. So you will see the role of the user, which we stated above, right? So user and then the last text input. And then the question in the text input, can you help me come up with a slogan? Then the response comes from the role assistant and the content is how about indulge in the Alfredo's experience one slice at a time. A pretty good, <laughs> a pretty good slogan, right? This messages array is something that you can save. And we'll get back to that in just a few minutes. But for the choices, if you basically unfold the messages, you will have the single reply of the chat GPT model. We can just map the content and then map the content to any custom field that you like to. I have a custom field for OpenAI response and you can just select it and then press add and it will then be added towards the below uh, overview of JSON path. If we continue from here, the only thing that we need to do now is to just give the response back that chat GPT basically gave us, right? And that we met inside the action block. So that is a really, really simple setup. So let's just see what we can do. So let's test this out in web chat. So let's just ask a random question. So let's say something like create a tweet 
about the following topic. And let's say something like chat GPT just released its API. And let's see what the system comes up with, right? Usually this just takes a few seconds because it's a really fast model. And as you can see here, exciting news, hashtag chat GPT just announced the release of its API, allowing for seamless integration of their chatbot technology into your own applications. Get ready for intelligent conversations like never before. Hashtag AI, hashtag innovation. So let's try it one more time. So let's say we are going with something different. Give me three tips about a successful marketing campaign. And let's see what OpenAI can come up with. You can see it's really, really fast, right? Know your audience, be creative and unique, and then set clear goals and measure results. And then we can try again. So you get the idea of single text completions, really, really easy to do. And this is just something that you can do with ChatGPT. Now, there is also an, another use case, and that is to use it, for example, as your smart default reply. And the way that works is really, really simple with just two blocks. These two blocks contain everything that ChatGPT uh, needs to have in order to basically have a good conversation with you. And if we take a look in the chat GPT um, integration first, so we have a create chat completion, right? But now instead of messages, we have a JSON field. This JSON field, if we take a look inside, you will see that it already has some existing data because I tested this. For example, hey, my name is Mark, nice to meet you. And then ChatGPT responds with, hello, Mark, my name is AI, and it's nice to meet you too. How can I assist you today? This information is then saved. And then soon as a new reply comes in, that new reply is going to be added towards this JSON custom field. And the way that works is basically by going with a JSON operation. Inside this JSON operation, you will go with the selected JSON field where you store your conversation history with ChatGPT. Then you go with an operation insert item. The key will then be uh, user and then the columns. The value type will then be text. And then you can just go with the text value of last text input. We will see the sample data on the left hand side. And uh, so for example, let's pick this sample data. And if we say click test, you will see that it will add the data that we just inserted above. So if we say click, click to test, then you will see that this section will now be added towards the total overview. So this is how this completion works. So how does that look like in the front end? The best way for me to show it is on my own website. So if I go towards my website real quick, I've also set this towards the smart default reply, by the way. So if we go towards the automations, you will see that this flow, this SDR flow is set to smart default reply. Now, if I go and interact with my uh, page, so if I say something like, hi, my name is Mark, then I will get a reply back really, really fast. Hi, Mark. It's great to meet you. How can I assist you today? Do you remember my name. So basically this is a test to see if ChatGPT remembers our chat history, right? So let's take a look. And there we go. Yes, I remember your name is Mark. Is there anything I can help you with today? I was wondering if you could tell me how so let's say something like this. I was wondering if you could tell me how to calculate the percentage difference between two prices. And prices actually needs to be written like this. So let's take a look if ChatGPT can come up with something. So this takes just a few seconds, but you can see how fast it already is, right? So here we have basically the complete step and explanation. So that is also the power of ChatGPT. It also comes with an explanation, not only the answer like the GPT-3 models, where it just gives you the formula 
and then hopefully you understand how it works. ChatGPT also gives you the exact same uh, reference on how to implement this and how to understand this code. So I could just go and say something like, thank you. And then ChatGPT will answer as you can see. So you can have a complete conversation and small talk with, uh, with the chatbot with, the, with just those two notes, as you can see inside the flow itself. So if we go with this setup, you will see that we have the JSON operation first to add the next question of the user at the bottom of the JSON array. And then we go towards OpenAI with a create chat completion. And then you will be able to map certain things. So if we test it, you will be, you will be able to map anything that you like to. Uh, the most important part is, of course, these messages, as you can see here. We will save that inside that JSON field of GPT uh, chat history. And if we want to map the latest response, the newest response of chat GPT individually, you can also do so under choices. Just unfold this and then you will be able to basically map this, right? Now, it could be if you have a really long conversation that the JSON custom field might contain too much value and you will get errors in uh, like too many characters inside this JSON field. In order to prevent that, you could go with another JSON operation. So if we go with JSON operation and we do that just before the OpenAI action, we can go and say we are going with the JSON field and then we are going to say get a slice of items. This means that if we say the offset is minus three, in this case, you will see, um, for example, that we only have two, uh, two items inside, right? But if we say we only want the latest item, so the newest one, we say the offset is minus one. And if we test it now, you will see that you will only get this bottom item. So for example, if you have a conversation like 20 text prompts long, you could, for example, go with the offset minus 10. This basically will only keep in memory the last 10 conversations that you have had with ChatGPT, and it should also give ChatGPT enough context on understanding the reply of the previous questions. So these are the two use cases of how you can use ChatGPT to your own advantage. The completion of ChatGPT is also a lot less expensive because it's 10 times cheaper than the GPT-3 models. So it would be really, really wise to use those chat completions because it will save you money on your tokens as well. Do take note that if you are going with this kind of use case where you allow ChatGPT to interact with your users, you will use up more tokens because you will put more characters inside the prompts each individual time because it's not just a single text prompt, it will also be a complete history of the chat that you will send along with that prompt. So something that you can keep in mind and try to figure out the perfect balance for this. I think if you save the last 10 pieces of information from that conversation, that should be more than enough to continue the conversation any way you like to. So if you are liking ChatGPT, be sure to implement this inside your chatbot right away. It is less expensive. There are many, many options. And soon there will also be a video coming where we will show you how you can use ChatGPT to answer your business related questions. So for now, have fun exploring, enjoy. And if you have any questions, do let us know and we'll be here to assist you. Have a great day, take care and talk soon.